Hello and welcome to another edition of Middleware Friday for April 13th, 2018. This is episode 61. And today we're talking about tracking ServiceNow change requests with Microsoft Flow. The usual disclaimer, while I am a Microsoft employee, the opinions expressed in the following content are my own. So in this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about an upcoming MVP Days presentation. And then we'll get right into the ServiceNow and Flow content. So as you may recall, the hot dog, not hot dog video that was originally recorded for the MVP Days, which is an online virtual conference that occurs several times per year at no charge and is really driven by the community. Once again, myself and John Levesque have signed up for another session. And this is going to be on April 18th at 3 o'clock Mountain Time. And you'll have to check in to see exactly what we have up our sleeves. Now, you may be thinking, okay, didn't you talk about ServiceNow recently? And that is true. And in that particular episode, which was episode 59, I did talk about tracking ServiceNow incidents with Microsoft Flow and Microsoft Teams. Now, the difference between incidents and change requests is that incidents are generally unplanned. Um, so, for example, when you have a software bug or you have an update, and something goes wrong, perhaps you might have a hardware failure or a VM failure. Those will all be examples of unplanned incidents, and that's what we were focused on in episode 59. Now, what we're going to focus on for this particular episode is change requests. And I'm sure if you've worked within enterprise IT, this is not all that unfamiliar for you. You have a change board. Uh, where I've worked historically, we've had change board meetings Wednesday morning. Sometimes it's an hour, most of the time it's usually half hour if you can work through it rather quickly. But the idea is that you need to go ahead and present your changes that you are about to undertake over the course of the next week. Now with change board, there's usually a lot of approvals and depending upon the type of environment that you're in, there may be a lot of dependencies and that's the whole point of change board is, is to talk about some of these things. But um, with all of those interdependencies on other teams, sometimes it's difficult to keep track of change tickets. So the other thing is not all team members show up for change board either. So it would be nice to have a very quick and concise way to get all of the change tickets that have been approved after a meeting like the change board and get a listing of those tickets when they're set to start, when they're set to end, and who is accountable for delivering that. And really that's the focus of today's content. So let's get right into the demo. So I've got my air server launched and I'm on my mobile device. And I've decided to use a mobile button as my trigger for this particular scenario. It doesn't have to be, it could be something that's scheduled. It could be something we could call from Teams, perhaps using the Flowbot. Um, but really it's up to you how you want to go ahead and invoke this particular flow. So I'm just gonna go ahead and run this. Now, once again, I want to find out the change, the approved change requests for the team that I'm interested in. And in this case, I'm gonna select network um, because I'm only interested in, in the tickets for, for, for my team. Go ahead and click done. And this will basically go off and it'll start to run. And then what'll happen is I will receive an email which will include a digest of the upcoming approved change requests. And you can see that on the uh, 13th, we've got network drivers update, and that's going to be assigned to Bo Rogeri. We've got uh, another ticket or a change request that's set to start on the 12th, and that's a router that needs uh, updated software version, and that's assigned to Fred. Now let's take a closer look at how we built this. And if you did watch episode 59, you will notice a lot of similarities. And that's okay. I think that what I really wanted to focus on in this episode was to show you what are some of the underlying tables in ServiceNow that you need to be able to pull this information from. So similar to last time, I have a list of assignment groups. These lists match up with the values inside of ServiceNow. I'm going to construct an array where I will store these, these change requests and I need to enrich these change requests with supplementary data and that's why I will need an array so I can go ahead and append that data. Now here what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the display name for the assignment group and I'm going to go ahead and list the assignment groups where name is equal to that assignment group. 
And the whole idea is that I need to get the sys ID or the underlying system ID for that specific assignment group to pass that in to sub work into subsequent queries. Now, since that is going to return a list of items, I'm going to have an array that I have to loop through. What will really happen in this case is I should only have one record, but um, in this case, uh, I still need to loop through it. So here we go. I'm going to now look at the change request table. So previously we would have looked at the incident table. Now we're going to focus on change request. And in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to look for, we're going to provide a query that says approval is equal to approved. And then this caret is really and. The assignment group is equal to sysid, which we would have pulled from our previous request of retrieving the assignment groups. And then we also want to look for records that have a state of negative two. And I'll explain that shortly, what that negative two represents. Once we have all of the change requests, we want to go ahead and get the user. So this is the primary user assigned to that specific ticket. So this is really how we're going to enrich this data set by getting supplementary info and actually appending it to our array. And similarly, what happens here is we need to go ahead, get the record, in this case, it's a single record, based upon the assigned to value. And in this case, the assigned to value is gonna be returned from this list approved change request, but it's not going to have a display name um, as part of the change request itself. It's going to have a link to that specific record which will include the display name. And that's what we're gonna to wanna to show in the email because showing an ugly system ID is not all that useful. So here we go ahead and we construct um, our change ticket node because this is an append to array action. And here we're gonna go ahead and use data from our previous three calls into ServiceNow. Once we've got our array assembled and we've looped through all of the change requests, we're gonna go ahead and create a very simple HTML table using um, just default capabilities, including headers and having the columns automatically generated. And then lastly, we're going to enrich the email that's being sent with a little bit of CSS markup and then the output from our array. And then that's gonna be sent to this, um, to the email address that's provided. Now, previously I mentioned that there was that state that of negative two and as you can see here in the listing, these are all of the various states for a specific change request. Now, I was interested in change requests that had been approved. So this could be approved by the manager, approved by the change board themselves. And that was in a scheduled state. So this is, you can think of as, yeah, we're ready to go. The work is planned and it's been approved. And we're just basically waiting on our start time to go ahead and begin that work. Uh, if you wanted to key off of different states, all you'd have to do is go ahead and change those values. So that concludes this episode of Middleware Friday. Hopefully you found this interesting, especially if you are a ServiceNow customer and you are looking for ways to automate different ServiceNow processes using Microsoft Flow. Once again, I want to thank BizTalk360. Um, if you are interested in the Integrate event, recommend you going and checking out the website at www.bistalk360.com to go ahead and register for Integrate, which is in London in early June. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you next time on Middleware Friday.